stay, Lord, in my heart. That should be our request, our plea, <coughs> our prayer to the Lord tonight. Stay, Lord, in my heart. <coughs> Leave in my heart. I greet everyone with the peace of the Lord. I invite the brethren to stand up. We're going to open our Bibles in Matthew. Matthew 13. Matthew 13, chapter 45. Amen. We're going to begin reading from the 44, 44, 45, and 46. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field. When a man found it, he hid it again. And then he, then in his joy, went and sold all he had and bought that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant looking for fine pearls. When he found one of great value, he went away and sold everything he had and bought it. The church may be seated. Let us hear a song.
Be the name of the Lord. My brethren, the chapter 13 in Matthew is a chapter that is reserved for a few parables. And here we will see the parable of the hidden treasure and also the parable of the pearl of great worth. And on these two parables that we read here, the Bible shows to us a few a few points that are important because it shows what God prepared for man. It shows the role of the Lord with relation to the salvation of man and also shows what m the man needs to do in order to be able to reach this project of salvation of man. What we said here a couple of weeks ago about the hidden treasure. The man found, the man sold everything that he had and acquired that field. And now, this morning, early today we spoke about the pearl of great worth. That also is a parable that is very important for our spiritual lives. Because in this parable, there is a definition of the position of men before the project of God. And here we will see exactly the process of salvation. It says here that a man found a businessman found a man is always dealing and dealing with pearls and looking for pearls but that man this merchant found something very special a pearl of great worth for sure something that he had never seen before for sure it was something that the perfection of that pearl must have been so great that the word says that it was a pearl of great worth. And it says that he went out and sold everything that he had and purchased that stone, that pearl. And the, wor the parable that was mentioned here by Jesus shows ex exactly this to us. It shows that man, man needs to acquire this pearl. And this pearl, if we analyze what is the understanding of this parable, we will see that this pearl of great worth 
is the salvation in Jesus, is the person of the Lord Jesus. And that man needs to find this pearl. But in order for this to happen, man needs to seek the Lord. Man needs to make an investment. For this is necessary an entire work around the acquisition of this pearl. So we're going to speak a little bit about this. We're going to speak about what is our role when we find, when we discover this precious thing. We need to sell everything that we have, let go of everything that we have in order to give the proper worth, to give absolute attention to the salvation in Jesus. And what it is to sell everything that we have, let go everything that we have, is the sin, is the pride, is evil that the world offers us. It's all this process of evil in order to take men to live in, in a distance, in distance from God. It's lack of forgiveness and lack of comprehension and love. We see that the world, as time passes by, the world gives us these evil teachings and God and the world wants to bring these things to inside of the church. And the homes, I'm not even going to say that because in homes, there's uh, evil teachings from the world, these concepts of the world, they, are, they have penetrated in, in the homes. Everything that is the biblical principles, the moral principles, they no longer exist. Nobody gives any worth to it. The homes have their doors already open for this. Is the media and social network and the news, everything. And what's worse is to bring it inside of the church. We cannot allow that to happen. You cannot let this thing to infiltrate inside of the church and remain inside of the church. That's why we need, from the moment we, f we meet with Jesus, from the moment we open up our hearts for Jesus and He, he begins to make dwelling into our hearts, we need to fight, we need to pray, we need to pay a price so that those things may leave our lives. That's what makes us precious to God. And that's what makes us important to, to God. And the more precious we are to God, the more important we will be to whom? To, to the enemy of our souls. I'm going to say it again. The more precious you are precious to God, the more important you are for the enemy of our souls. If your spiritual life is difficult, if you're going through difficult moments of attack of the enemy and trials, glorify the Lord. You know why? Because you're precious to God. Because the enemy of our souls is, is fighting to steal your blessing. But you need to remain faithful on the Lord and the Lord will take care of your life. The Lord will take care of your, you, help you overcome your trials and give you the rest that you need. We will no longer have time to abandon your spiritual life. We no longer have time to waste our time with the things of this life. The time that we have today is to prioritize what is from the part of the Lord. Because if we do this, if we give priority to our spiritual life, your, our secular life and our life here on earth will be blessed by God. From the moment in which you begin to preserve the values, the biblical values in our lives, the Lord honors not only you, but He, hon he honors your family, He honors what you have, He honors your health, he honors your work. He opens up the doors. Because one day we acquired 
something that is of great worth. We're no longer um, just a common person. We as a church, we are no longer simply a person that go in the world aimlessly. No. We know who take us away from the world. You, We know who placed us on this path. We know the path that we are walking on and we know where we are going. We are important to God. We are precious to God. Because one day this pearl of great worth was generated in our hearts. And that's how the process is. Who here knows how a pearl is formed? Who came from um, Sunday school? Don't, don't need to answer. I, I should ask who didn't come to Sunday school? I, I believe 90%. Let me give you a class here about how a pearl is formed. A pearl is formed inside of the oyster. Is in a in the depth of the water. The oyster, when when it opens up, sometimes enters some impurities inside of the oyster. Sometimes a grain of sand and this foreign body inside of the oyster, on the tissue that surrounds the inside of the oyster, begins to cause an irritation in, in the tissue and the oyster gets upset with that impurity and the way for the oyster to deal with this foreign body the grain of sand or whatever it might be it forms creates a, a, some sort of a, a biological material that begins to surround that foreign body and then it begins to release this this material and that's how the pearl is formed and the more the, the oyster suffers the more it is gets upset and uncomfortable with that more the pearl will be precious because more substance is released by the oyster in that struggle with that foreign body that entered and the struggle between the oyster that nobody sees is all the way down at the bottom of the sea and now when people go to dive in order to pick up their oyster the, the merchants that deal with the pearl when they open their oyster there the pearl is formed and what does it have to do with our spiritual life I said that Jesus Jesus is this pearl of great worth from the parable. And now we are going to understand why. The oyster is uh, man's life is your heart. That many times when we are in the Lord, sometimes the sin enters into your life and vanity and pride and evil enters and uh, the teachings from the world and the uh, the language from the world and anything that do not belong to the servant of the Lord. So when it happens, when it enters into the heart of the servant of God, what do the Holy Spirit do? The Holy Spirit causes that Jesus may be generated in, inside of our lives. Why? Because there is a, uh, an internal struggle inside of a man. Man has a soul that was conceived by God, that was given by God, and this soul wants to go back to the Creator. Man's soul does not accept the fact that it is eternally away from God. And on the other hand, there is the flesh. And so there is an internal struggle in the heart of man. Nobody sees. But we go through this. Because the more we seek the Lord, the more we pray, the more we, we read the Word, the more we 
spent your time to what is eternal. Then comes tiredness. Then comes what is the, the desires of the flesh and the desires of this life, the, the greed and, the, and everything that comes from men trying to set, set us apart from this and our closeness with God. And that's why there is this struggle between the flesh and the soul. Same, same thing with the oyster. And this trial, this suffering, this anguish that nobody sees, but only you know. Many times you enter into a, a terrible depression. Many times you enter into a period of anxiety. Many times you enter into a period of a tiredness. Why? And that's the reason. It's the absence of God that causes man to be empty, cause man to be incomplete. But the flesh, when you are like that, the flesh is satisfied. So this struggle is happens inside of man, because salvation in Jesus is generated where inside of man. That's when you are living this way with this struggle, fighting against the flesh fighting against the things of the world, you can be sure that this is a sign that you are on the right path. When you surrender yourself to tiredness, when you surrender to sin, this is a sign that you're losing. And it is not enough for you to just carry a Bible, dress up uh, a t-shirt saying Jesus 100% and put a, a a sticker on your car Jesus 100% that's not worth it this pearl needs to generate it inside of you this pearl needs to be generated with suffering it needs to be generated with trial because that's what Jesus uh, went through for us Jesus in the cross of Calvary alone silent like a lamb going to be killed. That's what Jesus went through for us. Nobody helped Jesus. Nobody helps the oyster. When the oyster receives something impure, a foreign body, quickly the oyster begins the process because it irritates the oyster, brings anguish to the oyster, causes the oyster to suffer. And sin needs to cause the same irritation in the life of the servant. If you are if you are no longer feeling the irritation when you sin, when you lie, that's dangerous. That's why tonight the Lord wants to generate in us the fear of the Lord. That's why the Lord, the Holy Spirit wants us to leave this place with this understanding that the sin needs to hurt in us. The servant of the Lord, when the servant of the Lord sins, he needs to cry with bitterness. He needs to go to the feet of the Lord and plead for the blood of Jesus so that be able to reach what? The forgiveness of his sin. Because when man pleads, the Holy Spirit helps us not to tolerate sin, but he neutralizes the action of sin in the life of the servant. And the Bible says that the wage of sin is death, but the Give, free gift of God is eternal life but you are in the process of this fight understand that you need to plead for the blood of Jesus the Holy Spirit helps you to neutralize the action of sin we will never stop being sinners but we cannot get used to sin we cannot live in sin we cannot think that sin is normal that lie is normal that this the mistake is normal. It's not normal. That's a great problem in the church today. We cannot uh, accept this because one day this pearl of great worth was generated in the hearts of many here. And you are precious to God. You are because there is inside of you this pearl of great worth. Not because we are better. No. Tomorrow any one of us can depart from from our, from this life. Tomorrow and the day after, age comes, the tiredness, and then that's how it is. 
nobody remembers. But what is important, that causes us to be important, that what causes us to be precious to God is the fact that we this pearl of great worth inside of our hearts. Not, in, not on our foreheads, not to show, humanly speaking, in, an, in our exterior, no, but inside of us, because it is in the interior that the Lord, when the Lord comes to take His church, Jesus, when He comes, comes back to take His oyster, what is He going to do? He's going to open up the oyster, and if the oyster has this pearl of great worth, that's when this oyster is going to be important but because what it has inside of it not because the oyster in itself but because of what he has inside that's why Jesus when he comes back to take his church we're going to live with him in eternity in heaven and there we will depart to eternity that's why the Lord here this word we need to understand it completely because each character here has an importance has a role But the role of the church is exactly this, is to understand what we need to do. We need to sell everything that we have. Because when we let go of the things of this life, the Holy Spirit works in order to make us find and acquire this pearl. Because the price has already been paid. A high price was paid on the cross of Calvary. Today, what we have, we need to, to do is to understand, accept this, and to live this project of salvation and to be, that is open for us. You entered here tonight. I don't know how your spiritual life is. We cannot make any statement. We cannot guarantee. But there is one thing that is important. If you haven't had this experience with Jesus yet, if you feel like you're not important, you feel like you are humiliated, if you feel like you are just a common person, this word does not come from God. Because tonight you can leave this place being called the blessed of the Lord. Tonight you can leave this church being considered that you are precious to God. Open up your heart. Don't waste time. We're going to sing a song. And during this song, you're going to place your life before the altar of the Lord. You're going to make an invitation to the Lord. Lord, make me, uh, allow me to find this pearl. Allow me to have an experience with Jesus.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Holy, holy is the name of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Glory to Jesus. We're going to have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we praise you for the beauty of your holiness. We praise you for your sacrifice on the cross so that we could today have life and life in abundance. That's why we praise you, Lord, for your grace, for the undeserving favor, for this revealed word that comes towards our hearts. We exalt you, Lord, because we are happy people, because we are your love, beloved church, washed and redeemed with the blood of Jesus. We say, Maranatha, come, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord, for this grace, for this undeserving favor. In the name of Jesus, amen. amen. The formation of the oyster, the pearl, instead of an oyster, is, is not something that happens uh, on just overnight. It's a process. And salvation of man is like this. You accept Jesus today, and you begin a process of salvation. It's not possible. Uh, this is uh, this teaching that you are sal saved once, you are salved o saved once. It doesn't exist. Salvation is a process. The process is exactly this, the irritation of sin, the fight against sin is what generates Jesus and gives man this assurance that we are in Jesus. I'm going to ask you to do a, a projection of a text. I'm going to ask you if you want you need to read this text with me. Romans. Romans 10 from verse 8. I'm going to read. We are going to read it out loud. If you desire, you also read out loud because this is a declaration, your declaration with your mouth. It's, it's coming from you, that you want Jesus as the Savior of your life. This is the first action that man needs to do. Sometimes many may have done it in the past, but they have been defeated by its sin. But today is a new beginning. I'd like to invite everyone to stand up. We're going to read all together from verse 8 on to verse 10. Amen. Nobody's going to look to the side. Everybody will be looking forward. Nobody will be. Everybody will look at the projection. But what is important is the Lord is here, and He knows, and He wants to hear your declaration, your testimony, your way of saying to Him, "I need." to have salvation in Jesus. Amen. Let us read together. But what does it say? The word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your hair, heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved for it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved amen glory to jesus glory to god
Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Lord. The Lord has shown us, we were praying for the service earlier. The Lord has shown that a woman entered here. And this woman has already lived in her own understanding. A few religious experiences. She went through several places. And we can consider this woman as a, a merchant of pearl. She goes here and goes there, searching for something of worth. But tonight, the Lord is giving her the understanding that everything that she has already gone through, the disappointments that she went through, the frustrations that she went through with the religion, is not going to lead her anywhere. But tonight she is having a meeting with Jesus, not with a denomination, not with a title, a label, or a name. But she needs to have an experience in the same way that she's having right now with the Lord Jesus because He is the pearl of great worth. Jesus is not considered. Uh, a common pearl like any other pearl no Jesus is the only pearl because Jesus is the only way because he is he has a great worth because Jesus understands men why does he have worth because he knows us he loves us there's no one that can embrace men in the same way that Jesus embraces men there's no one that can go towards you faster than Jesus doesn't matter how you are sick, disappointed, frustrated anguished it doesn't matter Jesus is the doctor of doctors he can give you what you need and what you need is the peace that only Jesus can give and tonight you began this process it's just a beginning what you're feeling, the touching of the Holy Spirit in your life to, tonight is just the beginning. It's a demonstration of the power of God. It's what God can and wants to do in your life. If you identified with this spiritual gift, just look for us at the end of the service. We want to pray with you to seal this meeting so that you leave this place completely comfortable without anything uh, causing discomfort to you because the Holy Spirit is going to give you this assurance, this certainty. The Lord has also shown another woman that is very afflicted. She has a spiritual thirst. She has been wounded because she's been looking so much for help and assistance, but she is always getting hurt from uh, what is from man but the Lord is giving her also this opportunity you don't need to look for anymore the grace of God has already been able to reach you salvation Jesus has already reached you and he is already uh, he has already removed your wounds because he was wounded for us Jesus was crushed on the cross for us and you know what? There's nothing that can condemn you. Amen. Let us pray, bring the service to a close. And if you desire, we want to pray for you. Just raise your hand where you are. And we're going to be here at your disposal and to help you spiritually in whatever is necessary. Lord, we want at this moment to glorify your name for yet another spiritual celebration. Because once again you heard our, our prayers. 
the prayer of the church, the prayer of your people, because your Holy Spirit was able to operate in our lives. We praise the Lord because the life, the the joy that fills our lives. We thank you because you have helped us up to this point and accept our prayer and ourselves in adoration to your name and take us home in peace so that we may have a week in your presence where we may be able to see the glory of God manifested powerfully in our behalf. It's a prayer that we say in the name of Jesus. Amen. In your name we say the wonderful grace of our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, our eternal Father, the sweet and tender consolation of the Holy Spirit be poured out upon us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The church may be seated. We're going to begin now the period of prayer. And if you want, you can raise your hand or ask someone beside you to raise their hand on your behalf. The ushers and deacons are going to be paying attention.